Welcome everyone, Reza here, and guess what, Maya 2023 is also here. We are going to go through some exciting new features in this version. Right off the bat, we just dive right in, starting with the installation process. Make sure to tick Arnold Renderer and Bifrost extension and Maya USD extension during the installation process because we are getting updates from every single category. Now, once that installation process is done, Maya is going to ask whether you would like to copy your preference from the old version to the new version. So if you have some shelves saved, if you have some new hotkeys, if you change the color UI or even have marking menus, make sure to bring them over. You can copy all. In my case, I've got some new custom shelves and some hotkeys that I assigned to my uh, tools that I know I'm going to use. So I'm going to bring them over, pressing copy. And there we have Maya 2023 with the brand new logo. Now, right off the bat, the welcome page is different. So we get some categories to choose from recent, uh, getting started and learning and what's new where you can browse around and see what's new and community where of course you can go to the tutorial community page and browse some very 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 exciting tutorials more on that later and let's jump right in and see what's in store for us in Autodesk Maya 2023. The first improvement I would like to talk about is within the sweep mesh tool. So I've got a scene where I've got few curves and I want to turn these curves into cables and we know now that uh, sweep mesh tool is just a perfect tool to make this happen. We've got all the cables in here, six of them, all six of them. Now the way that we used to work with this tool was to select all of these guys and to go to create and we've got sweep mesh in here and in the option box we had one node for multiple curves. So if I go ahead and apply and close you can see that we have one creator node for all six. This means that if I were to um, set the scale profile for these curves it changes it for all six cables. Now, there is no way that you can just assign this to just one of these guys. But here's the difference with the updated version. If I go to create and sweep mesh tool, you now have access to one node for every curve. You can go ahead and apply. Now you can see that we have sweep mesh creator six. This means that for each cable, we get a sweep mesh creator. So sweep mesh creator five, sweep mesh creator four, three, two, one. And that allows us to go ahead and let's say, I want to select this one and that gets controlled by sweep mesh creator one. So I can go ahead and just um, scale that and let's say I would like to add resolution to that and I would like to uh, twist that. So that's the type of result that I'm getting with this one. Let's say I want to go with almost the same scenario, but I do not want to get any twist on this one. Let's say I'm just going to go move forward with this one and I am going to just change the scale profile and turn on optimize to get some sort of a low resolution model and optimize the whole thing. And as for this one, I can just go ahead and change even the profile, make it slightly different and um, twist it. I can add 10 to just uh, twist it. I can increase the precision to get a much better result. And same with this, I can just change the scale profile and keep that one as, as simple as possible. Again, uh, precision of 90 and I'm going to twist it uh, five with values. And you can see all of these curves now have different shapes and that's the power of assigning different creator nodes to different objects. Um, I'm really pleased with this update that allows us to use this tool more efficiently. Next update is on the old grease tool, which is now called blue pencil tool. This uh, pen icon right here or pencil icon rather, if you click on it, 
you will be getting some options and it's actually a very useful tool for animators to create 2D drawings to create annotations directly in the viewport. Uh, now this blue pencil tool offers more features and flexibility. So um, the way that you work with it is actually fairly simple. You take the brush, you pick the color and you go through your animation. Let's say I would like to improve on the silhouette of the hand. So I may say, all right, in frame five, uh, change the silhouette to this. In frame six, bring it out a little bit and in frame seven sort of extend the arm to get a, a really nice stretched pose now the good thing about that we are getting the keys indicators in the viewport that you can save not only that we get the onion skinning before and after so you can kind of enable and disable those so we can say before the active frame i don't want to see i'm just focusing on after or the other way around we also, uh, we're getting um, fonts. So for example, I can just pick the font tool and say, this part is okay and using the arrow, uh, but the center of gravity is a little bit stiff. Even you can pick the transform tool, have the pr transform around the shape that you want, you press enter, and then you can kind of move that anywhere you want and Maya takes record of the position of it every single frame. So pretty neat stuff. You can also import uh, blue pencil frames into the current scene from a different scene. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you can cut frames, um, remove frames. It's actually pretty useful and nifty and it gives you more compared to the old grease pencil tool. Now, another update that I'm actually quite excited about is, is the new retopology tool in Maya. So um, I've got a really dense model that I've uh, created using photogrammetry technique. And I remember in the previous version, I actually brought the same model and used the retopology tool and that was a fail. But the reason that this retopology, the new retopology tool is working now, one of the reasons is because of this pre-process mesh. And that pre-process mesh optimizes dense input mesh to speed up and increase the success of the operation. So with this selected, you can preserve hard edges if you want. You go and uh, think about, all right, how dense I would like my model to be. Obviously with this, I really don't want to have a low poly mesh because I will lose all the details. At the same time, I do not want to have um, 2 million polygons on this model. So something like, I don't know, 10,000. To me, that's a, a good compromise. And you've got tolerance, which is margin of error for your target face count and very low value can result in slow performance. So don't bring it down to like one or two. For me, to be honest, we do the default value 10 worked just fine. Now I'm just gonna click on retopologize with this super dense and I'm not going to speed up the video. And you can see that I'm getting a really good result. I'm just going to give myself a shader. And there I have it. I've got a brand new mesh, um, all retopologized and looks pretty good. I'm actually very excited about this retopologized tool and will be using it more often in the future. So two thumbs up Autodesk for improving on this useful tool. The next update that I'm actually quite excited about is the new improved Boolean tool. Well, back in the day, I used to suggest to my students, do not use Boolean. It messes up with your topology, is gonna give you bad result. Maya is gonna crash. It's going to flicker, creates artifact. Well, not anymore. This brand new Boolean tool is magic. Let me show you some snippets. So I've got a canister and I would like to just finish this missing piece by using nonlinear deformer. So I'm going to create a cube and I'm going to 
add subdivision to that cube. So I'm just going to move it here and I'm going to kind of eyeball the length of that. I may not be accurate, but that's okay. I'm just going to zoom in. Well, maybe. Now, this is my source mesh. With Boolean, we deal with source mesh, object A, and target mesh, object B. Let's bring our target. Uh, our target is going to be just a normal cube, which I'm going to bevel. So I'm going to bevel this. So bevel, by the way, a really nifty addition to uh, 2023 is you can hold down control shift, right click, and you can see I'm accessing the actual modifier I just applied. I actually found out about that <laughs> uh, maybe half an hour ago. So I'm quite excited about this. Um, not sure if that's the most exciting <laughs> addition to 2023. But again, it's new. So I'm just going to go to object mode and move this ever so slightly into the object. Actually, I can give this guy a material. I'm just going to give this a blend and call this Chrome. And I'm going to give this guy just a normal blue Lambert. So you guys get to see what exactly is going on. Now, the way that Boolean works is actually fairly straightforward. You select the source model and shift select your target model and conduct Boolean. You go into mesh Boolean and you've got all of these guys at your disposal. What we used to have before was union difference, which is removing A from B source object from target object. Uh, and intersection which used to keep the overlapping so portion so we have that we also have difference b minus a which is going to remove source from target not target from source we have slice hole punch and cut out and split edge now i'm not going to go through all of these because visually speaking it's actually fairly straightforward what they do now, before I conduct this operation, I'm just going to go ahead and create a bunch of cylinders as well. So I'm just going to go in here and go into this cylinder and position it really carefully. So I'm going to go in here and select that. Maybe give this uh, the same blue Lambert. And I'm going to go this time all the way into the geometry. Control D and shift D just to move them or translate these objects um, with equal distance. I'm going to select all of them and send, bring them to the center of the object ever so slightly. Now you can do one by one with Boolean, but the good thing about this Boolean is it's not going to break that easily. So although the poly count is not super high um, it's somehow manageable you can select your source mesh and then shift select your target meshes all the way and the one that i want is probably a minus b but wait for it my favorite part is actually yet to come when you click you actually get this window where you can not only see the result you can also toggle between different modes so this window allows you to turn off or on certain layers your source object is orange your target objects are going to be gray you can turn them on and off you can change the way you view them you can go to this visibility tab and toggle between wireframe shaded bounding box x-ray so on and so forth but here's the good thing about this this is p cube 7 and i've got p cube 7 here i can go in there and say hmm, probably i want to hold punch on this one so you can actually see how easily you can toggle between these guys and say maybe i want to merge them or maybe i want um, to remove target mesh from my source mesh and just preview before you bake everything now the difference between difference 
and difference A minus B, which is very similar to hole punch, and B minus A, which is very similar to cutout, is as you can see, difference actually keeps the material and seals the hole, whereas hole punch doesn't keep the material and leaves the object open. So that's why I said you know how to use it because it's actually very, very straightforward. In this case, I actually want to seal what I have. And that is it, really. The cool thing about that is you can actually select your target meshes. Let's say I'm going to select all of these guys and we are still in the preview mode, I can select them, press F, and let's say, hmm, I probably need to move them back a little. You can actually move them back. You can go in there and say, well, you know what, I'm going to actually move them up, and I'm not gonna all the way into the geometry, and you get a live update. So this is really, really cool. You can even do it per object and say, well, you know what, in this one, I'm just going to move this up ever so slightly. With this one, I'm just gonna go all the way in and punch the hole. And in this one, I'm going to do the exact same thing, move it up ever so slightly and get a little bit of indentation. So the level of customizability in this new Boolean tool is really, truly fantastic. Once that's done, you can select everything and you can say delete by type, history, done. Now I can select my model, I can go to deform, I can go to nonlinear and bend. Obviously the handle that I have needs to be rotated and I need to apply shader to this piece. So holding down J, rotating it 90 degrees, put in minus 180 degrees. And of course, we know that we need to select these two and delete by type history to bake it. I'm just going to fix the pivot as well, center pivot and apply a material to it. Now we have our piece. All I need to do is just to reposition it and I'm pretty much done. So very impressed with this new tool and I feel like we are all going to use Boolean more often and now it's sturdy, it offers us live feedback and there are basically new features that we can benefit from. So another nice improvement on one of the tools that I did not use before, but now I'm going to use. There are other updates as well. One good update is with regards to USD plugin in Maya and now how it's well implemented within the Bifrost. I may actually uh, put together a tutorial on that. And of course, we've got a brand new Arnold 5.1 plugin, and that gives us some improvement on denoising using optics. So definitely check that out. Go to Autodesk website, new features, and actually you can do that now by going here and have a look at all the new features that is available in this brand new version. Thank you very much guys for watching this quick update and until the next video, see you guys later.